At some point in our lives, our breath is taken away by seeing someone do something spectacular one way or another, and we're actually attracted to it. And that's why we have season tickets for high performers. We want to see them, we want to watch them, we want to be in their presence, and we just want to be mesmerized by what they're doing. See, they're doing that as they shine their lights on the face of the earth. Whatever it is that they're doing, and we are watching, basically they're shining their lights. And in this series, in this mini-series, we've been discussing the message of making sure that your light shines on the face of the earth. And I would rather that we were also performers, other than being spectators. And uh, one of the ways that we're going to shine our lights on the face of the earth is going to be discussed in this podcast, and it's going to be interesting. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. never watch news maybe i rarely watch news is the correct way to put it so yesterday i was looking out for a program called newsmakers and it normally attached to some news i came back into the house a bit late after attending some kind of meeting at toastmasters where i uh, was participating in uh, an evaluation contest anyway i was looking for this program and i found that it just ended and what followed was was sports news. I'm actually interested in sports, so I, I stayed to watch. And uh, there was something very interesting that appeared. There's a kind of sport that is being inaugurated for the very first time in Iran. I forget the name of the sport. And uh, these people who are participating in that, and they were actually from different countries. I think it was 139 countries. I can't remember but it was quite a number of countries participating in some kind of obscure sports. Now, guess this. Guess what? There is someone who is going to shine their light through that obscure sport. And my point is simple, that we were meant to shine. However obscure our niche might be, however obscure our area of participation in life might be, it is immaterial. The material thing is that we were called, are meant to shine our lights. In anything and everything that we have put our hands on, it is our call, it is our mandate, and it is our responsibility to shine. And I'm sure there is someone in that obscure spot that is being inaugurated for the very first time in 2019, someone is going to shine, some country is going to shine. Maybe next year or maybe years after when they do the same kind of a meeting, someone else is going to shine or someone is going to maintain shining. We have this mode in life as human beings to shine. And I'm discussing several ways that we can be able to make our lives to shine. And today's episode is going to continue to build up on what we've been discussing the past three episodes. And in the first episode in this small mini-series, we saw that for you to be able to shine, you need to rise up. Scripture says, Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of God has risen upon you. You are not going to shine if you don't rise up. The Call to arise means that it is your responsibility to get up. It is my responsibility to get up. 
and that maybe connotes that before my i can shine probably i am not shining maybe i'm in the darkness or maybe i'm struggling or maybe i'm just coming up but the responsibility to rise up is me it's mine is for me to rise up and to shine and then also the shining is not someone else's responsibility we are not reflectors okay technically we are not reflectors Technically, we could be reflectors and that's a discussion for another day. But technically, we are supposed to shine. It doesn't say arise and reflect. It says arise and shine. The word shine in me, in my thinking, is that it means something unique. See, you shine according to your capacity, according to your capability, according to your calling, according to your uniqueness. That's how you shine. You cannot sit back and watch someone else's light being shone. And start complaining about someone else's light while yours is dimming and it is your responsibility to shine it. Maybe you're supposed to shine in mathematics. Are you shining? Maybe you're supposed to shine in music. Are you shining? Maybe you're supposed to shine in politics. Are you shining? The thing is, the common denominator is that whatever place you find yourself in, you are called to shine. And to shine ever so brilliantly so that people can be able to praise God and say that man has inspired me, has motivated me the way he did his light. And you can do this regardless of the situations that you find yourself in. In fact, by the way, situations are supposed to make you even shine brighter by overcoming them. And I know this is not a a good message. It's not something that you can easily sell out. It's not a feel good message, but it is the truth. Hardship setbacks, crisis, they cause us to rise up and to shine. And when we've overcome them, when we've mastered our challenges, one of my descriptions of, or one of my definitions of success is that it is the continuous ability to master challenges, mastery over challenges over and over again. And the moment you're mastering a challenge, guess what? You're shining brighter. You're getting some victory under your belt. You're growing, you're developing, you're increasing, you're moving from one level to another. The more we overcome the challenges, the more we shine. So it is our responsibility to one number one arise and it is our responsibility number two to shine not to reflect to shine arise and shine for your light has come you shine with your light not someone else's light your light my light is different from your light and i can be mesmerized by the way your light can shine in my life and even illuminate and help me shine much more for example i might be not so gifted in graphic design and i have you shining as an excellent unique graphic designer guess what you rise up you shine your part and i rise up and i shine my part and the whole wide world becomes illuminated by people shining we are called to shine That is our first responsibility, I believe. And the things that we are pursuing, you know, money and paying bills and so on, they're supposed to come as a byproduct, as a by the way. By the way, I need to pay bills. But I am called to shine, to shine my light. That's my mandate in the face of the earth. So you got to ask yourself this question, am I shining? In my family, am I shining? In my work, am I shining if I have work? In my life. Even if I don't have work in my life, am I shining? Where can I shine? Where was I called to shine? Where am I supposed to shine? How will I be able to shine? Those are questions that have answers. If you dare to ask them long enough, you will start getting feedback. You will start getting answers. But you cannot afford to live in this world with your light dimmed. You are a child of the Most High God. You are a child of God. You are the child of the one who said, Let there be and there was. And you are supposed to shine. You are supposed to appear on this world and illuminate it. Because this world is dark and fallen. This world is unfair. The only respite for this dark and fallen world is our shine. It is our light. It is our glory. It is our magnificence. It is our beauty in our light that is shining forth ever so increasingly. Scriptures tell us that we shine from one glory to another. In other words, from one level to another. That's why once you've mastered a level, you get to shine better. And then you master another level and you get to shine better. And all along we are shining. And we are shining and we are illuminating. 
illuminating and we are dispelling darkness and we are adding value and we are impacting society and we are influencing society and we are changing things for the better. We are shining ever so increasingly because that's why we are alive. To arise and to shine, it is our call. And so I've been discussing in the past three episodes the several ways you can use to arise and to shine. And the first thing we said, if you are going to arise and shine, number one, you've got to master your mind. I cannot even go there. If you want to discuss that, and if you want to understand what I discussed, that you can go two episodes back and you can see that how you can be able to shine your light through engaging your mind the mind is the engine of everything that you're going to do if you remove the mind from the process of shining guess what you've removed the fuel and just in a couple of minutes the shine is gone it is done look at a madman the mind is gone And God have mercy on them because they were meant to shine. And let me tell you, their lights might have been dimmed. But that madman can turn around. One situation can be turned around and overturned by someone else shining their light on the madman's life. Their life can be overturned and changed for the better and watch them shine. Watch them sober. Watch them get to know what their purpose is and watch them do it. Watch them live their lives illuminated and magnificent and glorious in the things that they were meant to shine. It is not their destiny to be mad. It is not your destiny when you have failed your exam to not shine. Not shining is not your destiny when you go through a crisis and someone has hurt you. Not to shine is not your destiny when you go through a crisis and you've lost this and you've lost that and you've not been able to overcome this and that. Going through darkness is not your destiny when you have a personal challenge, a personal misdemeanor, a personal thing that uh, has come to sidetrack you. And now you are not confident of yourself. You're not superior of yourself. You're not normal with yourself. You're feeling like you don't deserve to be alive. That's not your destiny. You are still called to shine regardless of what you've done. And the mind is the one that cements these things. Because once you've agreed with your mind that you're not supposed to shine, that's when the light starts dimming. And the end of the result is that you will live in darkness. Even though you think... You are living in the light. So number one, engage your mind. Number two, we spoke about that yesterday. We talked about your mouth. Train your mouth. And we say that once your mind and your mouth are in sync, regardless of what it is, if it's positive or if it's negative, it is going to come to pass. Life follows the mind and the mouth agreement. Anything else... That your life is manifesting is a result of the mind and the mouth agreeing. What have you been talking about your life? I am poor, I am poor. And I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying that you just start, there's this movement that used to come So in the 90s, in the early 2000s, where people are talking about affirmations, affirmations. And still today, people talk about affirmations that you start saying, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. I'm not talking about that kind of a life. You see, if you're talking about I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, and you are not saving, you're not investing, you're not working, you're not looking over some kind of income that you're supposed to have, then you can say, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, until you die and you're not going to be rich. What I'm saying is that internally, there is normally this platform, there is normally this agreement, there is normally this conviction internally that tells you something. And if it's something that is good for you, maybe it's a desire, heart's desire, then you agree with it with your mouth and say, yes, I am a successful businessman. Yes, I am someone who is winning contracts. I'm someone who is the best employer. I'm someone whose business is going through the six or seven continents in the face of the world. I'm someone who is adding value. You speak those things. But then... The opposite can also be true. If you agree that you're you're going to dwindle, you're not going to make your first million, you're going to be going down, you're not going to be a good employer and all those things, chances are that your life is going to follow that because you are actually organizing your life with the words that you are speaking. 
You want to tell the world I'm disorganized, that's what is going to show up in your life. When you tell the world that I seem never to finish reading books, that's exactly what is going to happen. When you start reading a book, you'll not be able to finish it. When you tell the world that you are not this person who is patient, that's exactly what's going to have. Impatience is going to be following you. Your mouth and your mind, whatever they discuss and whatever they agree on, your life is going to follow hook, line, and sinker. So watch your mouth today. I want to delve into something a bit different. And it's linked to the mouth. It's linked to the mind. If you want to, your light to shine. Number three. Accelerate your action. Action attracts. Action causes you to shine. You cannot just be having a mind that is, you know, conducive. And a mouth that is speaking. And you are seated at home doing nothing. There's got to be some action that you're going to take. And that action could be inspired action. Which means it's coming directly from your system. Directly from your spirit. Directly from your heart. Maybe you want to write. And there's an inspiration that is coming out. You want to speak. And there's an inspiration that is coming out. You want to draw. You want to do a book. You want to start a business. That is action. And that is inspired. But then at times we have this action that I call stewardship action. Which means... You are not inspired, but you've got to do what you've got to do. You've got to wake up and clean your bed. You've got to wake up and clean your house. You've got to wake up and run around and make yourself physically fit. You've got to wake up and watch uh, something inspirational, something instructional. You've got to wake up and read and write. Stewardship action. These things, these two types of actions are the ones that are going to cause your light to illuminate. The more action-oriented you are, the more your light is shining. Your light can never shine when there is no action. There's got to be action. There's got to be activity. There's got to be things that you are doing in your life in order to shine. There is no way you are shining, sitting, lazing around, procrastinating, doing the bare minimum, not putting excellence in your work. There is no way you are going to shine by postponing things. There is no way you are going to shine by doing just about what you have been asked. There is no way you are going to shine just, you know, just putting things together in a half so that you can beat a deadline. No, your light shines when your action is filled with your passion and you are expending 100% effort, 100% involvement in it. When is the last time you patted yourself on the back and said, Rah, I did it. I put myself, I put my life on the line for it. That book, I wrote it. That article, I did it. That uh, instruction that I was given by my boss, I went over and above and I did it. I, even if the world does not pay me, I know my God is going to pay me because I did it. When is the last time you did that? And let me tell you this. Every time you do it, I'm guaranteeing you, you're going to be shining. Every time you put 100% effort, 100% focus, 100% strength in your work, there is going to be your light shining. And when your light shines, the world responds in kind. Action brings theory to reality. In fact, Good calculated action will cause victory in the battlefield of the mind. (laughs) You can be seated at home and the mind has this battlefield going on. And it's telling you things that are making you to be so fearful. Let me tell you something. The moment you keep sitting and feeding that mind and ruminating upon the fear that you have, the fear that you will not make it, the fear that you will not be recognized, the fear that you will not have that money at the end of the day, that fear keeps growing and growing and growing. And you're telling yourself, there's nothing I can do. I am jobless. Nobody has given me a job. That fear keeps growing and growing. And the more it keeps growing and growing, your worth keeps reducing and reducing. And you start seeing yourself like a, a grasshopper in someone else's face, in someone else's mind. You start reducing yourself and your dimming starts coming in your light. Your darkness starts entering. But you can rise up and you can go out there and do 
action. Take action on anything, even if it is running out there in the streets to make your body physically fit. Let me tell you, I've learned it the hard way. The moment action is taken, that's the moment the battlefield of the mind is defeated, especially if it was fighting against you. The moment you're rising up to take action, that is the moment that the mind becomes active. And the mind, in fact, signals are sent to your mind that the mind, the, the rest of the body is needed. But the moment you're sitting there, I've talked about this term on this podcast many times. It is called apoptosis. Apoptosis is actually a medical biological term. It is referring to death. That means that the brain sends signals to the rest of the body that they are no longer needed and they start disintegrating. Why? Because there is no action. The body is not moving. Whenever there is no action, the brain responds, we don't need these body parts. But action wins the battlefield of the mind and makes your light to start shining. When you're taking action of any kind, equate it to striking a match, equate it to putting on the, the switch of the light on in a darkened room and the light starts shining. It is equated also to putting fuel in uh, something that can be able to light and burn and illuminate and bring your brilliance to the core and to the fore. But without action, I can guarantee you, you are not shining. Your light cannot shine while waiting. I know waiting is part and parcel of life. My mentor, Mark Maddock, normally says that there is nothing as drastic in life, there's nothing as bad in life as waiting for someone else to change so that you can have a breakthrough. There is nothing as bad as that. You are supposed to be in the heartbeat, in the thick of things in terms of taking action in your life. So you cannot be a waiter. And I'm not talking about the guy who normally serves at the restaurant. I am talking about someone who is sitting and waiting for a breakthrough. Waiting for them to grow old. Waiting for someone to call them. Waiting for this to happen. Waiting for that to happen. In the meantime, they are doing nothing. You see, even in waiting, there are some things you can do. And I've discussed this in some podcast some episodes on this podcast you can wait while reading scripture and feeding your mind you can wait while running out and making sure that your body is in top notch condition you can wait by reading a book and make sure that your mind is being fed you can wait while shining but you cannot wait while doing nothing and expect your light to be shining. Your light cannot shine while you are seated doing nothing while you are waiting. Your light cannot shine in wishing. I wish I was rich. I wish I was married to this one and that one. I wish my wife was like this and like that. I wish and wish and I wish you cannot have your light shining through wishes. Turn those wishes into goals and go after them with action. Neither can your light shine in inaction. Sedentary, rudimentary, non-action, no shining. Your light comes alive and radiant when you promptly and consistently take action that empowers your positive thoughts which you have spoken of by your mouth talked about your mouth yesterday say i am rich maybe that's what your mouth is saying okay today what action are you taking towards you becoming rich are you bringing in some income are you putting in some reserves are you putting in some investments are you increasing another stream of income what are you doing today Day to back up what you were spoken about yesterday. There is so much power in taking action. So much shining in taking action. Let me tell you, have you ever seen someone who is shining, who did nothing? The people that you normally go to watch, the people that normally inspire you, they are taking action. The guy who is always consistent, he is taking action. She is taking action. The lady who is winning entrepreneurship awards, she did not do that while doing nothing. 
You've never seen anyone accomplish anything and letting their light shine when they are doing absolutely nothing. And we have very many excuses for doing nothing. I've not been employed. Nobody has given me a job. I know it's reality. But listen, do not ever find yourself in the trap of inaction whether someone has given you a job or not make sure that every single working day there is some activity inspired or not that you are taking in your life there's some action that you are taking in your life there is so much extreme power when you are acting when you are doing things, when you are active, and I kid you not, a man can be lying in his bed, worrying about how his life will turn out. His thoughts of worry can cause him to conclude that he had better hide from this life. The same man on the same bed can switch, can decide in seconds, in microseconds to go out there and speak to a neighbor about something that they can do. The same man can decide in a second to go out there in a library and get a book and read. The same man can decide to go out there and jog. The same man can decide to go out there and lock themselves in a prayer room and pray themselves into an active victory. An hour later, that man feels so energized whether he was jogging, whether he was reading, whether he was praying, whether he was doing something for the neighbor, the same man an hour ago, an hour after, feels so much energized and so inspired and so productive and ideas start flowing through his mind on things that they can do and not do and so on and so forth. And this man feels happy. There is always inspiration in action. There is always joy in action. There is always happiness in action other than in inaction. You seldom find a person who is constantly taking action depressed. Seldom. You will find someone who is constantly taking action walking around depressed. Unless the action that they are taking is something that they hate every working day. Like I used to hate the job that I hate after I had outgrown it. Every single day I would cast the thing and then I go there at 6 a.m. and then leave it at 8 p.m. Monday to Saturday and then on Sunday I will simply die of exhaustion and resurrect again on Monday at 5 a.m. I was depressed in that kind of a rut, in that kind of action. So the action that you are taking has got to be some inspired action, some action that you love, something that you... But if you find yourself in a rut, sometimes in life you go through phases. Make sure that you have named that face. For example, when God said, let there be light and there was light. The scriptures that follow say that God named the darkness night. In other words, it is a face that is going to come and is going to pass. So at times in life you face some night seasons where you've got to go to that job that you hate. At times in life you've got to do it to put bills on the table. Um, I mean, to put food on the table and to pay some bills. But make sure that it is for a season. Make sure that you put a due date, an end date to it. And tell yourself, I'm walking out of this place by this. I cannot do this for two years. I cannot do this for three years. Because your light has got to shine. I hope these things are making sense to you. And I hope you're asking yourself these questions. How is my light shining today? How has my light been shining in 2019? How will my light shine even much brighter in 2020 and beyond? How can I increase the possibility and the brilliance and ma the magnificence and the glory of my light in the years that are here to come? Is there anything that I'm leaving to chance? Is there anything that I'm sparing? How can my light shine? The more you keep asking those questions, 
the more the answers are coming to you. So, we've done with we've dealt with three things and I'm summarizing them. In the previous episodes, we talked about making sure that your mind is engaged. Yesterday we talked about making sure your mind and your mouth are engaged, especially your mouth. How are you using your mouth? And today, we've said use your hands. Take action. Use your feet. Take action. Let your mouth, let your mind, and let your mouth be in sync. And your hands and your feet. Do some action. That is how your light is going to shine. Let me tell you this. Without your mind, without your mouth, without your hands and feet, and these ones are actually in quotes, there is no way your light is going to shine. I'm wishing you all the best, even as your light continues illuminating this world. Thank you for listening. Until next time tomorrow, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.